The Convocation Wars were undoubtedly significant in the history of EO, and yet we know so little about them, apart from when they roughly happened and a devastating rivalry that took place during them. So let's discuss this rivalry and the consequences it had on present day EO. Those familiar with the series will already know what I'm talking about, but for anyone new, it's the wars fought between two very influential circle mages, the necromancer Hokan Ashia and the demonologist Uram the Red. If you aren't familiar with who the circle was and what they did, I would suggest checking out this video first as it will explain why it came to the convocation wars in the first place. In any case, even though all the members of the circle fought in these wars, the rivalry between Hokan and Uram is infamous due to the immense amount of destruction it caused. The main reason for their conflict was, unsurprisingly, power. The two circle mages fought in and around the city of Molandia, the seat of the circle, causing their armies to ravage both the city and the surrounding lands in the process. They fought in that area specifically because it was more or less the border between the lands they individually controlled. From the games we know that Hokan ruled over the city of Whisper afoot the Grimwalk Mountains and that Uram was a demonologist, so it's natural to assume that he had a great influence over the region around the demonic rift Mulandia was built on top of. But they didn't restrict their battles to Mulandia only. From what the in-game characters say, their fights raged across much of the region and even beyond, including Whisper, the Howling Mounds, even Grey Dusk Vale, pretty much places in this circle here. And we know this due to the war-torn environment in those places. Today, this region is called the Darklands, but that wasn't always the case. Before the wars, the region was a lot more similar to something like Night Whisperdale when it comes to vegetation. It likely didn't have the green forests of Nortander, but it wasn't as barren as it is today either. The reason for its current state can very much be attributed to the combatants on both sides of this conflict. Hokan, as the world's greatest necromancer, employed a staggering number of the undead in his armies early on. Creatures who are known to be enemies of all life, so it's unsurprising that their aftermath appears so… well, dead. On the flip side, even though Uram made good use of his human army the Red Legion in the beginning stages of the war, he did mix some demons that he summoned amongst them. And much like the undead, the demons don't care too much about the environment they reside in. I mean, just take a look at the rift. I'd also like to throw in that Uram had an elder dragon, Firmia, under his control during this time, but the extent of his usage is currently unknown. Whatever the case, the two circle mages were fairly evenly matched at first, neither managing to make any substantial progress, but that would change after Uram managed to get Ulatha, a prince of the Red Horde, under his control. With Ulatha's demonic legions at his beck and call, Uram started crushing Hokan's undead, and Hokan soon found himself on the retreat, seeking refuge in the city Kaithalua. It's somewhat unclear where exactly that city is on the map, but there are places with similar names in the west of Xu, and we know that Hokan himself came from Xu, so my guess would be that it's somewhere in this region here. Though arguments can be made that it's closer to the Darklands since they mainly fought there. Keep in mind though, that the Circle Mages were very adept at using teleportation magic, so it could be that they simply moved their armies over great distances that way. But no matter its location, we know that Uram was quick to besiege the city and set it ablaze with his armies, almost achieving victory, but then Hokan counterattacked with an ace up his sleeve. From the records of Commander Halikor, who partook in this battle as a soldier, they were attacked by creatures made out of black steel who mercilessly cut down anyone in their path. He is, of course, referring to the Blades. The Battle of Kaithalua was the first time Hokan had ever used the Blades, and word of them would soon spread across all of Eo. Uram managed to retreat some of his forces from Kaithalua, but he was suddenly on the losing end of this war, and he would have lost it were it not so close to the prophesied date of the convocation. In a strangely lucky turn of events, due to the convocation happening, both Hokan and Uram had to focus on the ritual at hand, and the war technically ended in a ceasefire, as both Hokan and Uram were killed during the awakening of the elements. Hokan's blades lost their power, and without a master, Uram's armies returned to their own lives. The Red Legion created settlements in various spots in the Darklands, while the demons returned to the Rift, though some of them still reside throughout the Darklands, together with Hokan's undead, turning it into a place of death. So, in the end, no one won this war. 
Both came fairly close at points, but ended up dead regardless, with the former and future inhabitants of the Darklands being the real losers seeing what their home has turned into, teaching us a valuable lesson that there are no victors in war. But what do you think? Would you have rather sided with Hokan or Uram? And let me know why in the comments. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.